If you are in a boat heading into Gloucester Harbor, a new beacon in the form of a mural is displayed on the old paint factory building at Ocean Alliance. It paints a dire warning about the predicted sea level rise for the next 80 years. The mural is a project by the Cape Ann Climate Coalition and was created by one of its members, artist Jim Seavey. Let's explore sea level rise, coastal resilience, and learn more about this mural on Everything We Do Matters. There are two reasons why global warming is uh, producing sea level rise, one of which is that the water in the, in the oceans is responding to the warming by expanding. The other uh, reason is the ices are melting on the glaciers. Any ice overlying land, when it melts, will add to the ocean and so will add to the ocean level. That's a little more than a foot per century on average, uh, but near shorelines you can get a, a more magnified effect and the paint factory illustrates that with the mural that has been installed on the paint factory. They're getting a, a greater amount of sea level rise. Climate groups and environmental organizations are working at a local level to help their communities prepare for the consequences of climate change. Coastal resiliency is really a top climate change issue for Cape Ann. We're an island. One of the most severe climate changes we're going to face is rising sea and storm surges. Storm surges will be more significant because they're erratic and they'll really demolish up a lot of property. We wanted to put up a sign where lots of people could see it, and I think the harbor is a good place for lots of people. Gloucester residents, Cape Anners, and everybody, tourists come in the summer. Cape Ann Climate Coalition reached out to Ocean Alliance, an international ocean science conservation group whose headquarters are in Gloucester, and asked if they could put a mural on one of their buildings. Ocean Alliance is actually a conservation science organization. We collect data so we can educate people and affect change. So when the Cape Ann Climate Coalition you know, gave me a call and said we're interested in this project, I thought it was a perfect fit. So we're a group that thrives on collaborations. When I grew up in Rockport on uh, near Old Garden Beach, I would go down every day in the summer, build sand castles, boats, dams, the whole works, I'd spend all day on it. And the next day it would all be gone because of the tide. So in my gut, when I hear that the tide is coming, I want, uh, it's like the British are coming, the British are coming, the tide is coming. And I just want to help people become aware of what is gonna be necessary to do. The mural is painted on weather-resistant plywood. Jim Seavey spent the month of September at an outdoor space at Ocean Alliance, prepping and painting the mural, and also supervising a group of volunteers who helped with the project. The final step was to mount the panels to the sides of the building. It was done at low tide, because at high tide, the water levels would be lapping at Jim's feet at the base of the mural. The data on the mural is from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and Climate Central. It shows a predicted height of tides and storm surge. The highest point in the mural shows the peak of storm surge in the year 2100 and is almost 21 feet tall. He did not use numbers for the height of the tides. Instead, it is a visual presentation to create a visceral reaction for our future yet to come. I heard the idea about the sign, I got it, I liked it, but then when I saw the sign, I'm like, whoa, that's bigger than I thought. So even I was educated. Jim explains how to read the mural. The vertical white stripes indicate 20 year gap. The green at the bottom indicates the average high tide as it will increase over the next 80 years. And the blue line uh, indicates the peak high tide or this, what they call the spring tide or the king tide, the, the highest tide of the year, which happens once or twice a year. Now the red area, is based on a very, very 
uh, site-specific, Gloucester Harbor site-specific uh, data on probability of a five-foot increase in the tide during a storm. Beyond 2040, the probability is 100% that there will be five feet of storm surge. So that means no matter what is underneath it, whether it's a spring tide, a low tide, or a high tide, there will be five more feet of water in the harbor during a bad storm. Our coastal communities will need to adapt to the coming changes in sea level rise. I hope everybody's reminded that climate change is here. Climate change is gonna do a lot of damage and we have to prepare ourselves. And we can, we can survive this if we're prepared and if we know how significant it's gonna be. Adapting to climate change and planning is essential, but it is not enough. The way to stop uh, global warming and hence climate change is to reduce our pollution uh, due to fossil fuel burning. That's a start. And trees along with kelp beds and algae beds are great photosynthesizers and they can help in the short term because uh, they can sequester the carbon for a century or more. We need more groups like the Cape Ann Climate Coalition. You know, groups of sort of like-minded people that want to affect change rather than just sitting at home doing nothing and being full of despair. Uh, and, and the government really has to uh, start changing its subsidy strategy, the one involving uh, phasing out fossil fuel use and phasing in these alternative renewable sources of energy generation. By not taking action, we are denying future generations the right to a healthy and sustainable planet. Bad things are already happening. Where I go to high school, it floods every winter because of storm surges, and that's, that shouldn't happen. And I remember being young, and I remember seeing bad things happen with the climate, and I remember thinking, wow, the people who are grown up, they have to do something to fix this. Things are going to go wrong. And now I'm grown up and I'm here and the problems are still here and they're getting worse. Seeing that mural really made me think, like, what are we going to do if we don't do anything about this? There's not going to be anything that we can do. I think that this should stand as a call to legislators that we need something to be done on a bigger level than just climate marches. We need people to take action who have the actual power to take the action that needs to happen.